powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the 10 o'clock news on Q2, Montana's news leader. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Janelle Slade. And I'm Jay Cohn. In California, firefighters finally gaining ground against two deadly wildfires. At least 50 people have been killed in the week since the fire started, and more than 200 still missing, many of them elderly residents. The Camp Fire, the deadliest fire now in California history, has scorched 130,000 acres and has destroyed as many as 7,600 homes. Officials haven't determined an exact cause of the fire, but that hasn't stopped about two dozen victims from filing suit against Pacific Gas and Electric Company for allegedly failing to maintain its power lines. A PG&E transmission line experienced an outage the morning of November 8th, just 15 minutes before the campfire erupted. And although forecasted rain in the area seems like a welcome event, it also could spell disastrous as far as mudslides for these already ravaged areas. Today, Interior Secretary Ryan Zinke toured the fire with California Governor Jerry Brown. Secretary Zinke, a former Navy SEAL, described the scene as, quote, worse than any war zone I saw in Iraq, end quote. This is my fourth trip to California. Unfortunately, every trip this year has been forest fires. And each trip, I say this is the worst fire I've seen and now we're here today, and this is the worst fire I have seen. This is just not a state issue. It's not a federal issue. This is an American issue of managing our forests. We all want healthy forests. We're going to all have to work together in order to find solutions to this, and it's a variable. A lot of variables in this problem. Previously, President Trump blamed the state's water management policies for its wildfires, and then this weekend blamed poor forest management even threatening to withhold federal funding for the state. However, on Monday, the president signed a major disaster declaration to provide additional federal aid to affected areas. Wyoming's congressional delegation has secured two key leadership positions when the new session of Congress begins next year. Senator John Barrasso was elected chairman of the Senate Republican Conference, while second-term Congresswoman Liz Cheney was selected as chair of the House Republican Conference. Both positions represent the number three GOP leadership positions in both the Senate and House. Both Barrasso and Cheney won easy re-election campaigns in last week's midterm election. Barrasso winning with 67 percent of the vote, while Cheney garnered 62 percent of the votes cast in her race. Well, finally, election season is done, but just in time for our elected officials to get to work in Helena. The 2019 Montana Legislature will convene at the Capitol on January 7th. And today in Helena, the newly elected lawmakers chose their leaders. MTN Chief Political Reporter Mike Dennison tells us what happened and what it means for the session's agenda. In the House, the top post of Speaker went to Representative Greg Hertz of Polson, who's been a leader of the Republican Party's conservative wing in Montana. And in the Senate, Bozeman Republican Scott Sales, another strong conservative, was re-elected as president. Both men said a top priority for Republicans at the next legislature will be balancing the budget without a tax increase. I don't think there's an appetite for Republicans to raise taxes, so it's going to be incumbent upon us to make the budget fit uh, with existing resources. They also expect plenty of discussion on whether to extend the $550 million a year Medicaid expansion program, which ensures about 100,000 low-income Montanans. It's set to expire in June. Voters last week turned down a ballot measure to extend the program and fund the state's share of the cost with higher tobacco taxes. When asked if he supports an extension, Hertz was noncommittal. We're going to have an open mind and look at these policies and make sure we protect the most vulnerable of the people of Montana. There's, there's a lot of ideas on the table. I hate to um, speculate on any of them at this point in time. Sales said he's curious to see what adjustments to the current program its supporters may propose to get it extended. There's going to be a fair amount of horse trading that goes on on that issue, but I would have to think that it's going to, it's going to uh, be one of the major, if not the major issue of the session. Minority Democrats made it clear extending Medicaid expansion is one of their top priorities. But we got to find a way to protect 100,000 people from being kicked off their health insurance. Montanans decided that 185 might not have been the way to go, but nobody decided that we should kick those folks off. Schreiner said Democrats also want to restore some budget cuts made last year to fund programs for the disabled and other low-income citizens. Democratic Governor Steve Bullock comes out with his proposed two-year budget on Thursday. Also on the table is a possible change in House rules that could limit the power of the GOP majority and make it easier to pass certain bills. It's a bit early to make predictions on the session, but I think we can say we'll have big differences on major policies that will take some hard-fought compromises to solve. At the Capitol, Mike Dennison, 
MTN News. Thanks, Mike. Now, four Billings area lawmakers also won election to leadership post today. In the Senate, Democrat Margie McDonald was selected as minority whip, while Republicans Doug Carey and Kerry Smith will serve as two of the three majority whips. Over in the House, Representative Dennis Lenz of Billings will serve as Republican whip. If you drive Zimmerman Trail, it could be another couple of weeks before that popular road opens again, and the impending cold snap won't help matters. As you can see here, crews are busy working Zimmerman again today, where new pavement is still being put down. The colder temperatures, though, have delayed the project because crews can only pave for half the day. The bottom line, the project likely will not be completed until after the Thanksgiving holiday. Work on the new roundabout, where Zimmerman connects with Highway 3 atop the rims, is nearly complete, but also just a bit behind schedule due to the recent cold and snow. So for now, the route is still closed at Rim Rimrock and Zimmerman. But when it's done, the road will be wider. There'll be upgraded guardrails, all of which will improve safety. Well, public safety in downtown Billings, a topic of the day at a public forum at the Northern Hotel. Q2's Connor Pregitzer reports tonight on what's involved. Citizens, the Billings Police Department, and the Downtown Billings Alliance all came together this afternoon to discuss how we as a community can bolster public safety in the downtown core. Chief Rich St. John spoke about the challenges facing Billings, specifically the vagrant and migrant population, and how these issues are being addressed. As our ultimate goal is not to fill the jail up with, with people who are homeless, who are intoxicated in public, uh, who are mentally ill. That's not the place for them. We need to get them to treatment. A way in which BPD has been working to achieve this goal is through the Motivated Alcohol Alternative Program, or MAP, which aims to leverage sighted individuals into treatment as a jail alternative. Chief St. John noted the success of this program, but also some of the issues that are still slowing the process. These included the lack of clean and sober housing in Billings, as well as Montana's lack of public intoxication legislation. Downtown Billings Alliance Executive Director Katie Easton emphasized the need for communication to resolve these issues going forward. We need to be able to listen, we need to be able to acknowledge what the challenge is, and we need to be able to work together uh, to find a solution. Property crimes were highlighted as one of the challenges posed by this specific population, and thanks to Buchanan Capital, a private contractor was brought in to discuss some of the possible solutions. Mark Johnson is one of three crime prevention through environmental design experts in Montana and Wyoming, and he spoke about some of the basic principles of SEPTED while showing examples from the Billings community. Having clear windows with no nothing on the windows so people can see out of the, bills, the business, uh, trimming vegetation so it's not covering up lighting and, and windows again so people can see out. I mean, a lot of times it's simple maintenance fixes of, of replacing those bulbs that are burnt out uh, on street corners and on buildings and it lights it up because because lighting is probably the number one deterrent uh, in criminal activity when it comes to crimes of opportunity. In Billings, Connor Pregetzer, MTN News. Thanks, Connor. Now, Chief St. John says Billings Police has one employee trained in crime prevention through environmental design and plans to work closely with the Downtown Billings Alliance in the near future. The Montana Women's Run does a lot more than get thousands of women out moving each spring. Proceeds from the race help support year-round health and wellness for women all across the community. With this year's donations, the cause over the years has donated more than $1,250,000. This year, funds go to the YWCA, Billings Clinic Foundation, and the Billings YMCA. Now, a portion of the $100,000 raised this year also goes towards scholarships for female cross-country runners at Rocky Mountain College and MSU Billings. Last spring, more than 8,500 women took part in the women's run. Next year's women's run is set for Saturday, May 11. And turning to weather, Bob McGuire, you've got some words of caution for anyone heading out on the roads this Friday and Saturday. Yeah, it starts off with a big purple thing all over the state. Let me show you what we're talking about. It is a winter weather advisory, and it starts up along the High Line, goes all the way down to Yellowstone National Park. We basically have two of them. The first one is a winter weather advisory up there by Great Falls. You could see maybe one to three inches of snow on the plains, four to eight inches of snow in the mountains, and that starts at 3 a.m. Uh, Thursday, Thursday night, Friday morning. It goes to 2 p.m. Friday. Then south of Great Falls, it's more like two to five inches of snow on the plains, five to ten inches of snow up in the mountains there. Here's how the whole thing's going to shake out. You can see by the time Thursday night gets here, uh, most of it still is jammed up in Canada, but by the time Friday morning gets here, it drops down across the state. Rain in South Central, uh, Montana, including Billings and Miles City, but then later on that morning it turns to all snow. And then look at this, by the time Friday night, 10 o'clock gets here, it's still snowing. Saturday it kicks out of here. How much snow are we talking about? What it looks like in Billings? About two and three quarter inches, almost six inches over in Bozeman, and about maybe four inches around Missoula. It's going to be 
be a nasty day to drive on Friday across Montana. We'll have your forecast in a few more minutes. All right, thank you, Bob. Mira Ricardo is no longer Deputy National Security Advisor. The White House confirmed Wednesday that Ricardo is leaving her position. Press Secretary Sarah Sanders says Ricardo will transition to a new role within the Trump administration, but did not elaborate. Ricardo was placed on the hot seat earlier this week when First Lady Melania Trump called for her dismissal. Melania was reportedly upset over an apparent spat between uh, Ricardo and the First Lady staff over her recent trip to Africa. Attorney Michael Avenatti has been arrested on domestic violence charges. Police in Los Angeles say a domestic violence report was taken Tuesday and Avenatti was taken into custody Wednesday. It's unclear who claims the domestic violence happened. Avenatti posted bond Wednesday night saying he's never struck a woman and will never strike a woman. Avenatti is best known for representing adult film actress Stormy Daniels, who says she had an affair with President Trump. A host of major media organizations now supporting CNN and White House reporter Jim Acosta. Both are plaintiffs in a lawsuit against the White House over its ban of Acosta and the revocation of his press pass. The suit alleges the ban violates CNN and Acosta's First and Fifth Amendment rights. On Wednesday, a joint statement was released signed by multiple news outlets, including Fox News, NBC, the Associated Press, and the New York Times. The statement says White House reporters should never be banned for arbitrary reasons, and they must be free to ask questions. In response to the lawsuit, the Justice Department says the White House rejects the idea that it can't decide which journalist can be given a permanent press pass. A decision is expected from a judge on Thursday. Still ahead on tonight's 10 o'clock news, gift cards. They're a convenient gift idea. Turns out they're also convenient scam avenues as well. Find out how. And later in sports, Scott shows us if Mick Durham earns his first basketball win with the Yellow Jackets tonight. You're watching MTN News with Jay Cohn and Janelle Slade. Storm Tracker weather with Bob McGuire and sports with Scott Breen. This is the 10 o'clock news on Q2, Montana's news leader.